from motion blur to missed exposure, today we're going to be talking about 7 of the most common things that we may sometimes miss getting right in camera and how do we fix that in Photoshop. And some of these issues are so that you cannot even get it right in camera like tanning of the skin. And also this video is very special. Why? That we're going to share later in the video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and any of the photos you wish to download to follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. First of all, you took this photo, it looked fine, but when you zoomed in, there is a bit of motion blur in here. How do we fix that? We need to know the direction of the blur and the amount of blur. It's that simple. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Now before applying any filter, let us not forget, go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Why? So that we can change the values later. Hit OK. Now let's go to Filter, Sharpen here and then Smart Sharpen. Inside of that, you have this option right here to remove what? You want to remove Lens Blur, Motion Blur. We need to choose Motion Blur. Choose that and then increase the amount all the way to the right hand side, right? And then keep on increasing the radius. Have a good amount like 11, 12, something like that, which should look like fixing the issue. And after you have done that, you need to play with the angle. Now set the angle to where the motion is. If the motion is at this angle, set it to that. So in this image, if we turn off the preview right here, we can see that the motion is in this direction. So we're going to set the angle similar to that. Let's turn on the preview right here. This angle is fine. 55 was actually already fine because I was playing with it. Let's keep it to 55 back again. And now all you need to do is to play with the radius. You can also click on this to zoom that area. You can also zoom it in the preview, up to you. And then slowly and gradually keep on increasing the radius. At this point, it is blurred. Keep on increasing it. It's getting better and better. And we're going to stop right about there because after that, it's going to create that weird halo effect. So 12 is fine. And then you control the amount. Slowly and gradually increase the amount and stop at just the point where it is enough. So at this point, I think 333, 334. That's great. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And this is the best we can get with Photoshop. I know it's not perfect. Here's the before. See? And here is the after. If you want to get better results in fixing motion blur or any kind of blur actually or any kind of low res photos, Topaz Photo AI does a much better job and it's my go-to reparation plugin. So I'm just going to do a comparison right here with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J and let us place it at the top and name this Topaz. By the way, it's also available as a plugin for Photoshop. You can try it out for free. I'll link it up in the description. Go to filter. Once you have installed it, it should be inside of Topaz Labs, Topaz Photo AI. There's also Sharpen AI but Photo AI does everything, it's, it's what I use. And it automatically detects everything and it fixed it. D done! I mean, it's <laughs> insane. Let us zoom in, have a look at the before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. This is just crazy, crazy good. Now, if you want, you can go right in here, play with the values, play with the slider right here, but I don't really have to do any of that. On top of that, you can even upscale it from here, remove the noise and all sorts of stuff, recover face, so many different things, but we don't have to do anything. Everything in here was absolutely automatic. Now I'm going to save it to Photoshop, click on it and have a look at it. It's done. So here is the Topaz one and here is the Photoshop's repair. It's a night and day difference. So this is the original Photoshop's repair and Topaz. Crazy. Now what to do when you have a different kind of problem like you missed focus. This happens very often. This photo looks fantastic. The neck is focused nicely as you can see. The texture is there. The hair is focused nicely but if you have a look at the eye, it is not focused. So what to do when you miss the focus by a hair? It's not a big deal and you can fix this easily in Photoshop. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J again. Do not forget, go to filter, convert for smart filter so that you can change the values later. Now let's go to filter, again, sharpen. Smart Sharpen. And this time you want to fix what? Lens Blur. So simply choose Remove Lens Blur. That's it. Increase the amount all the way to the right hand side and zoom into an area where there is an edge like this nostril right here. Now decrease the radius and slowly and gradually increase it and stop at the point where you begin to see the halos. This is fine. This is getting sharper. This is getting nicer. And after this point, I begin to see halos. So at about maybe 4 or 3.8, that is fine. And there you go, issue fixed. <laughs> Have a look at the eye right now. It is so much more better than before. Here's the before. As you can see, it's all blurred out. Here's the after. You can tinker with the radius and see what works better for you. 
I feel that 3.6 is nicer and then you can control the amount. Decrease the amount and slowly and gradually increase it. Stop it to the point where it looks good to you. So I'm gonna stay at 340, hit OK. I'm going a bit heavy handed, but have a look, everything is in focus. But the problem is the hair right now is over sharpened because if it's already in focus, the neck is over sharpened. So we need to selectively apply it. With this layer selected, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button to create a negative mask. And with the mask selected, take the brush with white as the foreground color. With a soft round brush, just paint over the areas where you need the sharpening, like the eyes right here, this eye right here. You can keep the nose blurred a little bit for a shallower depth of field, but that's up to you. You can sharpen it for the lips here, forehead, there you go. Now everything is tack sharp. You can also do this in Topaz if you want, but Photoshop does a pretty good job right here, so it's not really required. But for a slightly better result, you can try. Here's a short comparison. There is a big difference, and I'm not even using the latest version of Topaz. I didn't buy the upgrade, and oh my gosh. So this is Topaz, and this is Photoshop. There's a different kind of sharpening, so make your own conclusions. I'm gonna zoom out a slight bit. So this is before, as you can see, everything is smudged and blurred out. Here's the Photoshop's solution. It's pretty darn good. It does a pretty good job. You don't need Topaz for this one. But if you want to try, here's the Topaz. Photoshop, Topaz. This thing happens all the time and it's a very easy fix. As you can see, the dress is quite overexposed. You don't have to do anything. Just with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J and then go to filter. Convert for smart filters if you want to just save your rear for later. Now let's go to filter. And then camera raw filter, very easy fix. Just take down the highlights, that's it. And all of the details are back. So this is the before and this is the after. Now when you do decrease the highlights, you do lose a little bit of the contrast. So to counter that, hold the shift key and click on auto whites. It's gonna set that accordingly so that you're not losing any details. If you want more details back, you can try decreasing the exposure and go from there. But in this example, it's not really required. So I'm gonna keep the exposure at minus 0.2. Again, hold the shift key, click on auto whites. It is set automatically. Hit okay. Boom, all of the details back. Now, if you wanna target just that area, you can do that too. Hold the alt key or the option key and click on the mask button or just use the mask right here, up to you. I'm gonna hold the alt key or the option key Click on this button to create a negative mask. Take the brush with white as the foreground color. You can paint on just that area broadly up to you. Whatever you want to do, it's all up to you. The next problem is underexposure or the shadows getting too dark. Again, you don't have to think too much right here. Press Ctrl or Command J, make a copy of the background layer. Again, convert for smart filters, let us not forget. Go to filter, camera, raw filter. We're gonna treat it slightly differently. Just increase the shadows. And again, if that is not enough, increase the exposure. If that is blowing out the details right here, just decrease the highlights. That's it. You can also hold the shift key. It turns into auto highlights. Click on it. It's set automatically. This is fine. You can go beyond that, by the way. And there you go. Hit OK. All of the shadows back. And if you think it is too much, you can always decrease the opacity from here as well. Now, what about color casts? How do we fix all of this? As you can see, there's a lot of green in the hair on this side of the face. It's super easy to fix. First of all, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation because you want to target the colors. And then with the help of the hand right here, click on it and click on one of the green areas. That's it. It categorizes that as yellow. That is fine. Increase the hue and saturation all the way to the right just to see which areas is it targeting. Now, this is the range that it is targeting. You can make the range narrow by taking the sliders, outermost sliders here, and then hold it from the middle and then move it and stop at just the point where all of those areas are targeted. So these are the areas. By the way, for precise targeting, you can even make it wider like so. I'm gonna just pop it out so that I can see what is happening and bring it right about here and make it even more narrow actually. And all right, these are all the areas. We're gonna expand a little bit on this side. There you go. Now this is targeting more than the greens. So we're gonna make a space right here. This controls the transition between the areas that are targeted and the areas that are not. So we wanna make it smooth by taking it slightly apart like so and hold it from here to move it like so. All right, that is fine. You can move the other side as well if you want to target all of it. There you go. You can go further into the greens. Now, bring the saturation and hue back to zero by double clicking on the text where it says hue and saturation and just play with the hue to fix that. 
there you go, fixed. You can also play with the saturation to fix that. And this is fine. So that's how to easily fix color casts in Photoshop before, after. All right, we have done this video before, but today I'm gonna to share with you how to do it fast. Many a times when you're capturing portraits, you will have sweat patches. So how to fix it? First of all, with the quick selection tool selected, select the sweat patch. You don't have to be very accurate to the dot. Once the selection is active, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Let's make this narrower. And again, with the help of the hand, click on one of these areas. That's it. It categorizes the color as science. Increase the hue and saturation. Oh, oh this looks bad all the way to the right to see which areas are being targeted. You want to make sure everything is being targeted. You can expand the range, expand the range from here as well. All right, there you go. Once that is done, double click on saturation and hue text, it's reset. Now adjust it, increase the lightness, it's gone, but saturation is gone too. So increase the saturation back again and it's fixed mostly. What do you think? Maybe we can play with the hue a little bit. Let's take it slightly to the right. And there you have it. But what about the edges? No worries. Click on this button to create a brand new layer. And then with the help of the brand new remove tool, fix those. You want to make sure sample all layers is checked and just paint over these areas. That's all. So I'm going to paint over this area. Give it a little bit of space. Now I haven't done a pretty good job. I should have increased the saturation a little more. But you know, this is not bad. Let's fix that. Let's fix this particular area. There you go. Similarly, let's fix this area. All you have to do is to just loop around it and it's gone. Now I could have done a better job with a little more time and an increased saturation right here. But again, here's the before, here is the after. For a detailed video, you can watch this one right here. Now this fix is also gonna use the same method. Happens all the time, face is brighter, this is tanned. How do you match both of that? What is the differentiating factor right here? color, right? So again, click on the adjustment layer icon, click on hue saturation. You know, it is just the same tools over and over again in Photoshop. And if you understand the concepts of stuff, Photoshop gets very simple. With the help of the hand right here, click on the hand and then increase the hue and saturation all the way to the right hand side. You can expand it slightly. So I'm gonna keep it this way, expand the other side, make sure everything is targeted. Even right here, you want to make sure everything right here is targeted nicely. A little bit of the jacket is fine. Or sweater, t-shirt. I'm sorry. Anyway, once this is set, double click on hue and saturation. Now we need to increase the lightness, but then again, it's also going to increase that for the face. Don't worry about that right now. Just increase the lightness and the saturation. All right. We want to limit it just to this area. We don't have to worry about precise masking. Just select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask, take the brush with white as the foreground color, just paint over the arms. That's all. Done. Similarly right here, see, we didn't have to worry about the hair selection and all of that. It's done. Now you can adjust it at any time. Double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer. Oh my gosh, where did my adjustments go? Remember, we need to get back to that category. So this was inside of reds. So you can adjust it. You can maybe increase the saturation slightly. And this just does it. So here's the before, here's the after, fixed. So those are the seven common things that we often don't get right in camera or we just cannot get right in camera and how to fix that in post. And with that, I remember telling you that this video is a bit special. Hopefully with this video, we will be completing 1000 videos here on YouTube. So it's just hard to believe that in all of these eight years, we have made 1,000 videos. I know there are other videos that I have made for Facebook, other platforms, a lot of courses here and there, but here on YouTube, 1,000 videos. So I wanted to take the moment to thank you for supporting me all throughout these videos, tolerating me all throughout these years and telling me how the videos were, how you felt, what you learned. It just means the world to me. You mean the world to me. Thank you so very much. And to celebrate this, I'm giving away a very special discount on Piximperfect official courses. You can check the link in the description to check it out. If you want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond the right way, definitely check it out. We have more than 100 lessons to help you and guide you throughout the process. Everything is follow along. 
So with every lesson you download the stuff, you follow along. It is at a very nice pace so you can do it with me and create some incredible stuff. It has more than 300 assets that you can download and follow along with and we are constantly adding new ones, new lessons every month. So this discount is going to be for the next 5 days only so check it out at piximperfect.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope these fixes helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.